year's worth of preparation. A blueprint for the future. 40 rounds. One thousand two hundred and fifteen picks. With the sixteenth selection of the twenty fifteen MLB draft, the New York Yankees select. This is the most important day for every organization, even more so than for me, the international side. You know, you really make or break your future in these drafts. So again, you hope you make the right picks and they can, you know, again, hit their projections. It's a really optimistic day. I look at it a lot like the early part of spring training. You know, there's a lot of hope, there's a lot of anticipation, and there's a lot of work that goes into this. I mean, this is 360 days kind of wrapped up into these three right now. It's. Uh, probably is uh, the equivalent of a you know an eight-year-old on Christmas morning. Major League Baseball's annual holiday doesn't come without tireless preparation. And for the Yankees, it all starts with trust. Main involvement is hiring, you know, the right person to run the draft, and that's Damon Oppenheimer. You know, Damon does a lot of think tank, work groups, workshops, whatever you want to call it, as he trains his staff. You know, analytics has become a big also part of the, the process and uh, that's the one great thing about Damon. He, uh, you know, again, continues to evolve, emerge, grow, open-minded, objective, and that's the type of people, you know, serve the Yankees well as we move forward. This is Damon's call, draft the best player at each round, and, and uh, we hope, uh, obviously, they hit their projections and stay healthy. Damon Oppenheimer, the Yankees czar of domestic scouting, absorbs everything draft-related. From overseeing a sprawling web of scouts, to pulling the trigger on draft day selections. The actual draft day itself is, is it's really nerve wracking because we work so many times throughout the year from 5 a.m. to get to flights all the way until midnight, you know, for us when it comes to these games that we go to see. So it's exciting and all we're trying to do on this day is field calls from advisors and players and you know get last minute information on medical things to you know help us make the right decision. It's a daunting task. But Oppenheimer and his troop of evaluators whittle down the list of prospects. I mean it really starts from the first time you see the guy and you and you're trying to look at how tall he is, his weight, his athleticism, how he moves around the field and the next thing you're trying to do is break down his pure natural athletic ability and what we call the tools. You know, on the average, if you're talking about a high school player, you're talking about 1,500, 1,700 minor league at-bats. That's a lot of seasons. That's a lot of adversity. That travel's not easy in the minor leagues. So you want to have, you know, a high degree of comfort in the makeup and, and you know, what kind of what guy you're buying here. I try to watch everything I can. I try to watch them interact with their teammates. I watch how they get ready to play before the game, how serious they take their work. You gotta love it. You know, you gotta love it. You gotta be a grinder. You gotta show me that you can overcome adversity. You know, th little things like that that may not play, and the kid might not know it when he's playing at his school, how tough it's gonna be. You know, and, and so I try to look for things that I think might translate into how bad he wants to play too, besides being very talented. And then at the culmination is the draft, and we come in a week before the draft, and we've had 
individual meetings with all the scouts. We've had individual meetings with the cross checkers. Then we just kind of adjust the list that we've built through the whole year a little bit. So that's how it kind of puts it together. The Draft Board. The Draft Day Bible for every major league team. No two are the same. The board contains hundreds of players from all over the continent with individual grades next to every single name. We all get to talk and, and how we've seen the players and how we line them up and the boards that you see around, around this room are nobody specific board. It's sort of a, a combination of how all of us have seen those guys throughout the past year. I've been doing it a long time so maybe I see some things that a younger guy might not but you still have to lean on the scout that has that air, he's known that kid maybe three, four, five years, maybe longer. And that plays a big part for us. And trust me, when that board is lined up for the final time before the draft, if people think makeup and character is not important, they're wrong. It's very important in this room. You'd really like to pin it down. I think everybody has a comfort level with knowing what you're going to get and knowing that it's going to happen. But in the draft, it's such a flowing thing that you don't know what everybody's doing in front of you. So there's that unease that you don't know what's going to get to you at 16. And you have a group of guys that we've discussed that we think might be more in play, but we still don't know. I'm hoping that the players that Damon wants to select are the ones that fall to him, you know, and then it gets disappointing if certain guys that you expect to be there or hope to be there come off the board before you. And But again, there's there's a lot of talent out there, and that's why he's done all his work and homework before the draft, uh, so he's got the board lined up as deep as you can possibly have it. And, and so uh, yeah, it's just a waiting game. Let's get this thing started. Welcome, everyone. You are watching the 2015 MLB First Year Player Draft right here on MLB Network and MLB.com. I'm honored to welcome everyone to the MLB Network as we mark the 50th anniversary of the MLB Amateur Draft. Colorado Rockies select Brendan Rodgers. Yeah! Tampa Bay Rays select Garrett Whitney. The Milwaukee Brewers select Trent Clark, an outfielder from Richland High School, North Richland Hills, Texas. The New York Yankees have the next selection. taking at number 16 to the podium we go with the 16th selection of the 2015 MLB draft the New York Yankees select James Caprillion a right-handed pitcher from the University of California Los Angeles in Los Angeles California had a couple of the guys still on the board and then uh, James was one of them and we're excited that he was able to get there so yeah it was a little nerve-wracking but all the guys that did all the work and it's just like a culmination that you feel like wow this is great this is what we're one of the guys that we we're really targeting and wanting to get and, and we were able to, to land him. if you're gonna have a son this is what you want him to be 
now. He's a stand-up kid. He's very mature, very aggressive, very focused on what he wants to do. And he's one of the best kids I've met as far as wanting to win on the field. Hey, James, congratulations. Yeah, yeah we we're excited. We were able to pick you right there. So pretty, uh, pretty, yeah, pretty tense moments in our draft here. I'm hoping you, you get to us. So we're, uh, we're excited about it, and, uh, and I'm glad you're looking forward to it. Thanks for uh, answering a lot of the questions throughout the year. We worked really hard, you know, uh, again, to put ourselves in a position like this year, for instance, you know, we made a concerted effort on the Major League side, you know, to, for instance, let a Robertson go, signed Andrew Miller, and take the compensation pick for Robertson. That would be number 30. So it uh, gives our amateur team, who we have great confidence in, another chance to, at the Apple, for the most part, in the first round to take another player. We saved $10 million in the free agent market and added a great player, we think, in Andrew Miller, even though we lost a great one in David Robertson. But for our future and our present, we thought it was the best decision-making process. And today, uh, you know, we'll culminate that. So we'll get two for the price of one, for instance, when we lost Robertson. With the 29th selection of the 2015 MLB Draft, the Toronto Blue Jays select John Harris, a right-handed pitcher from Missouri State University in Springfield, Missouri. The New York Yankees have the next selection. from the University of San Diego. Okay, thank you. With the 30th selection of the 2015 MLB draft, the New York Yankees select shortstop Kyle Holder. From the University of San Diego in San Diego, California. Uh, was a guy that we've been targeting pretty much the last month. He's a slick fielding, shortstop, left-handed hitter. He's a good athlete. He went to college to play basketball at first. His defensive skills are second to none. He's such an elite defender. He's going to be a plus defender at the big league level. He plays winning type baseball. He gets the bunch down, hit and runs. He makes great contact, starting to drive the ball. He likes to be up late in the game, knocking you know big runs. We're really excited to be able to get a shortstop of this caliber at this pick. So far, we're, we're two for two on guys that we targeted, and hopefully we can finish off with a great day and get somebody we really like at 57. By the end of the week, Oppenheimer and his team will have added James Caprillion and Kyle Holder, along with 39 other fresh faces. While those players will shortly begin their journey, the Yankees amateur scouting staff will immediately turn their focus to the names that will populate the 2016 draft board.